Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Networking Workshop Part 2. If you have just completed viewing part number one, it was facilitated by my colleague, Dave Lawson. My name is Mike Waller, and I am a volunteer at the Willow Creek Employment Services Group, and Dave and I have the privilege of doing this workshop series together. Let me give you a little bit of a background about myself. I happen to be an individual who was a corporate uh, person for about three decades who retired from that in 2002. And I made a decision to go into a small business of my own and joined an organization called the Entrepreneur's Source, which is a franchise concept. And I serve as an entrepreneurship coach, helping to guide people through the process of um, well, figuring out whether or not self-employment is a good option for them. So I got them through the process in a very methodical way, and then we helped to find opportunities, either in franchising or potentially some other kind of a concept that may be a good fit for them. So I am a very avid networker, and I am hopeful to be able to share a few insights with you today that might be helpful in improving your networking processes. So let's get started. Here we go. I think it's a good idea to bring God into the picture because if you wanna have good guidance as to how to be a good networker, that you can always reach out to the Lord and he will give you insights and give you guidance and give you direction. Proverbs eleven fourteen, which uh, Dave had shared with you in the prior session, simply says this, where there is no guidance, the people fails, but in an abundance of counselors, there's safety. I encourage you to gather information and gather skills and to gather insights from any individual that you think has some wisdom to share with you. So let's start with a story about Don and the stranger. Now in this story, there are three characters, my friend Don, and by the way, this is a true story. The stranger, the lady on the right, and the thing that brought them together was the train station. And here's how the story goes. My friend Don was an employee of uh, Motorola for many years as an engineer. And Motorola, as many of us know, went through quite a number of downsizings in order to, um, well, downsize their organization. And so as a result of that, Don found himself on the outside looking in. Well, he began the process of networking in a number of different ways. On this particular day, he happened to be standing at the train station of the village in which he lives. And uh, Don was uh, heading downtown to do some networking. Happened to be another individual standing on the platform. And this is a woman, and this is not a real image of her, obviously, but you get the idea. And this woman and he started up a conversation and Don began to share with her that uh, he was in a search process and he was heading downtown to do some networking and so on and so forth. So the conversation got a little bit deeper. And as a result of some of that dialogue, the woman asked him, said, well, what kind of companies are you looking for? Well, Don shared with her some of the names of the organizations that he had an interest in. And one of those companies happened to be a company by the name of Brunswick. Now, some of you may be familiar with Brunswick. They are uh, certainly into the bowling uh, recreation scene, and they also happen to be the largest boat manufacturer in the world. And Don happened to be very much of a boating enthusiast. So anyway, he shared with this woman the fact that he uh, had an interest in uh, Brunswick as one of the candidates' uh, companies that he was uh, searching out. And lo and behold, this woman over the course of this conversation, shared with him that she was the wife of the CEO of Brunswick. Now, what are the odds of that happening? Probably pretty slim, but you just never know. And that's the reason why I would always say to you, don't assume anything. You do not know the person that you are talking to necessarily and what connections, contacts that they may have. Now, as the story went, Don ended up getting an interview as a result of that happenstance connection on the train platform. He didn't get the job, but that's not the point. The point is he got an opening and that's what networking can do for you. So that's the reason I share this story with you. Again, it's just a very practical application. You can use any opportunity of interaction with any person as an opportunity to network. 
Well, let's talk a little bit about your comfort zone. It comes up quite frequently. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? You probably have a pretty good idea. How are you in settings where there are other people? Parties? Gatherings of any sorts? Business gatherings? Training sessions? You may find it very easily to walk up to someone and have a conversation, or you may find it very, very challenging, and so you minimize it as much as you can. Well, there happens to be a crossover type of an individual who's called an ambivert also, and I happen to be one of those people. I can turn it on when I need to, and I can turn it off when I wanna have quiet time. You have to figure out who you are as an individual, but don't let it be an inhibitor for you, because you may find that you've gotta stretch yourself to do something that is not necessarily the most comfortable thing for you. So I would encourage you to, again, give it some good reflection, figure out what kind of a person you are, stretch yourself beyond that comfort zone. Something you have probably had some exposure to if you've attended any of the Willow workshop sessions, and that is something called the car model. I simply call it having your story in your hip pocket. And what I mean by that is that you should be prepared at any point in time to be able to share some with someone what your challenges were, what actions you took, and what results you produced. It could be very opportunistic and situational. So you need to have a good sense of what are the things that I can reflect on myself as being accomplishments that I have done at the very appropriate setting and very appropriate time. Let's take a look at what might be called your networking toolbox and what kind of things might be in it. Well, I'm an old school kind of a guy and I'm a big believer that business cards are important. I realize we are in the digital age, but there's nothing more convenient than popping a business card out of your pocket and handing it to someone. Now, business cards, again, uh, are something that you can acquire from a number of different places. You can create them yourself. You can uh, uh, buy them via Vistaprint online, or you can go to a, a printing company like Alpha Graphics and have, uh, have a bunch of them printed up. I had a thousand printed up for 80 bucks and they did all the card layout and everything for me. However, you may be a high tech kind of a person and you may say, well, that's kind of old school and let's just give me your phone number and I will plug it into my phone. That's great. Use whatever methodology is going to work for you and work the best. There's something called a handbill. And this might sound uh, a little, well, curiosity generating. What's a handbill? Well, a handbill is a document that kind of has a, the look of a pseudo resume, and it is intended to be able to pa be passed out at uh, various different kind of gatherings where you might have table settings and group kind of settings. LinkedIn, if you're not on LinkedIn, I encourage you to be. In fact, we offer another workshop on LinkedIn that I would encourage you to consider participating in if you're not that familiar with it. But I can tell you today that in the world of finding a job, 90% of the recruiters are gonna find you via LinkedIn. So make sure that you've got a good LinkedIn presence. Here's something for the real uh, um, computer files, uh, personal website. Some people like to prepare a website that just reflects who they are, kind of their online, well, their online resume. So these are some, some tools that can be in your toolbox. Now here's a sample of my business card. Now you can see it's got the branding for my company name on it. It's got my name information. Uh, I've got my contact information on there. And on the back side of it, I also have uh, a few paragraphs that reflect the kind of services that I provide. Very nice, very convenient, very handy. You can do it with uh, a blank backside, so uh, you can give somebody the opportunity to write a note or two on the back of it, or you can have something like this that kind of states who you are and what you do. Now, the handbill that I mentioned before, my, my buddy Dave is a, uh, a believer in the use of the handbill at various different kind of, of settings where he may be able to just pass it out. Uh, could be some kind of a networking group, could be a training session, could be a, um, uh, just a gathering of individuals that are sitting around the table sharing information about themselves. So another alternative and option for you. So where can you network at? Well, a whole bunch of places. Business associations, think of them as trade gatherings. If you're uh, an engineer or you're an accountant or you're uh, some, someone who has kind of a specialized skill and you go to various different kind of business meetings, that can be a forum for networking. Training sessions, without a doubt, you can uh, network with other people at some kind of a training session. Job fairs, 
perfect place. You're going to meet employers and you're going to meet other candidates for different kind of opportunities. LinkedIn, as I already mentioned, is another great resource as well as other social media. Um, community or neighborhood events, so block parties. Think of uh, something where you're going to have a gathering within your community or within your neighborhood. The commuter station, I already gave you a story about that. The Jewel, walking the dog. Now let me share a story with you about networking at the Jewel. Personal story. My wife had sent me to the Jewel to pick up something for him. Standing in line, waiting to check out the lines movement slow. Had on one of my logo um, polo shirts, which said the entrepreneur source on it. Line moving slow, person in front of me turned around. We started to chat and they asked, well, what's the entrepreneur source all about? Well, it gave me the opportunity to share with that person. And lo and behold, their brother-in-law was in a position where they were actually thinking about uh, buying into a franchise. And so as a result of our conversation, that led to a conversation between myself and that person's brother-in-law. It never would have happened without doing some networking or being comfortable in doing that. So again, don't assume anything. Assume that you can do networking anytime you are engaged with another individual. Volunteering, another opportunity for you to potentially make connections and to uh, do some networking. So what do you do at an event? Well, if you go to an event that has 10 people, 50 people, 200 people, uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But my suggestion to you is this, talk with a number of people, but look to connect with only a few. It's not an opportunity to try to collect as many business cards as you can get. That's not gonna be a fruitful opportunity for you. What you're looking to do is to make connections with people of like mind that you can somehow make a connection with and potentially do something for. Learn to be a good listener. It's always good to listen before you speak. Offer to assist others before you ever ask for anything. People can glean that out from a conversation very quickly if you are only there to try to suck information out of them. Be prepared to give far more frequently than you expect to get. But provide value, compare some notes, create a conversation. Again, this is gonna be very situational and you're gonna to have to make the determination on the spot. Is this someone with which I have a connection of some sorts or is it someone that, um, well, I should just move on. <laughs> be sure you exchange contact information and that's the important thing uh, about having a business card or having a smartphone that allows you to exchange that information. So you can do a follow-up of some sorts following the event. Make a point of connecting on LinkedIn and other social media, wherever it's appropriate. Again, I guess this will be situational. So don't hesitate to take advantage of the opportunity to meet somebody new and make a connection with them. Be intentional about staying in touch. This is really important. Uh, I'm a big believer in networking continuously. So I make a point in my processes to do networking every single day in some form. And I reach out and connect with somebody every single day of the week. I have a simple goal. It is just simply to make at least five touches a week, one a day. So some quick tips for you. And this is again, another one of those, you may have to stretch yourself kind of opportunities. Be prepared to just walk across the room or make a phone call. Nothing happens until you make it happen. And that's the reason why I say to you, just take that little hike across the room. Look for someone that may be standing alone or maybe just um, well, reflecting out the window. Who knows? Um, make a connection with them. Smile. You do it with eye contact. You do it with your tone of voice. People know if you're looking to uh, engage and you've got a friendly voice. Uh, again, that can be either in a phone call or it can be in a face-to-face -face contact. Find commonality, find a point of connection. It could be a personal connection or it could be a business connection. Uh, give you a simple example. I am an individual who has been to Walt Disney World 38 times. Now, some people who might be looking at this would go say, 
say that's the stupidest thing in the world. Or they may just say, wow, I got an interest in Disney World too. Our family goes down there every two or three years. It's been a big point of, of commonality for my family. And so it's allowed me the opportunity to reach out and strike up a conversation with somebody in an appropriate way. You've got to figure out what's interesting about you that's different about you that will make you stand out. People remember the fact I've been to Disney World 38 times. Spread goodwill, show energy, show enthusiasm, show interest, most importantly. Again, people like to interact with people that they like. You've got to make yourself a likable person. It may take a little bit of work. It may take some stretching. Learn from other people that you know are really good at it. Be curious. This is probably one of the best tips that I can give you. If you just have a natural curiosity about things and about people, you will find that it's not hard at all to be curious with the person that you are talking to and learn something about them. There was an individual by the name of Dale Carnegie who has now passed away, but he wrote a, a book called uh, how, to how to Win Friends and Influence People. Now, these are some of the tips that he had. The smile thing, you already heard me talk about. People just don't warm up to a sour countenance. Use people's names. Figure out ways to make connections that help you to remember somebody's name. Uh, it knocks down barriers and increases the comfort zone of, of having a conversation. Again, be sure to ask questions. Build credibility by making the conversation bigger than just about you. Again, being a good listener is vitally important. And again, there's that exchange contact information. Stay in touch with the best. Find people that you find interesting, for whom you can bring value, and for whom they can bring value to you in an appropriate way. A few networking cautions. Don't conflict with an event's purpose. Now, this may sound a little ridiculous, but don't network at funerals. It's probably not the best place to make connections. Not to say it's ever inappropriate, but again, the point is be appropriate to the setting in which you are in. Be prepared to give first before you ever ask for anything. If you make it obvious to people that you're only trying to milk them for information or contacts or connections, it's going to be very obvious. Don't take that approach. It's not the best thing. Don't dominate the discussion. Again, being a good listener means that you're listening and hearing what other people are saying. Be prepared to reciprocate. If someone gives you something, be prepared to, again, say, hey, how can I help you? How can I serve you? Staying in touch is vitally important. I have connections that I made in my career. I, again, was an exec for many years, 20 years with a company by the name of ADP. I still stay in touch with people that I worked with some 25 or 30 years ago. It's important to stay connected with people. So what happens? Nothing happens unless you make it happen. I'm a big believer that you got to have an action plan for yourself. So here's a couple of suggestions that I would encourage you to take away and do something with. List 25 professionals or friends with whom you're going to actively network. Be specific about it. Write down the names of people and use it as a checklist to check them off as you're able to reach out and make contact and connection with them. If you're in the job search mode, list 10 companies or specific jobs to target. It'll help you to locate insiders within that company. Most of us are very anxious to help other people in any way that we can, but it's tough to do if you don't give me something to work with. Tell me the companies that you're looking to go to work with or specific jobs you're looking for. It'll help me to fine tune how I might be able to be helpful to you. And I think that's true of most individuals. So I hope that we've been able to give you some insights here that you can use in some way, shape or form. Hope you found a nugget or two that turned out to be more of a gold nugget than a chicken nugget. But I hope that it's something that will, you will be able to practice in your networking efforts as you go forward. Here at Willow Creek, we've got quite a number of resources that are available to you. And we have a website presence called willowcreek.needsmet.org. And out there are a number of different resources that you can access by simply signing up on the website. It'll give you uh, 
complete access to all the workshops and presentation materials that we have available, as well as it connects you with our organization so that if you need some one-on-one -on -one coaching or counseling in some way, shape, or form, we are very happy to do that. So again, thanks for being in attendance today, and I hope that you're going to learn how to be a great networker.